Hey folks, Roland Martin here. Hey, today we're going to talk about spinnerbaits and how to build them and a really cute story about me building one years ago and what happened on that whole deal. But let's just start off with the spinnerbait. Here's a body of a spinnerbait that's, uh, that's kind, of, kind of old and it kind of beat up a little bit, but it's got a good wire and it's got a good hook. I got some powder coating here and I'm just going to touch it up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, a white, a, the white, uh, I'm going to heat it up a little bit, just heat it up some, heat it up some, no problem, just heat it up a little bit, okay, take the powder coat, that on there, do 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 nice little powder coated deal, okay, Try to kind of heat it up a little bit more and just kind of cure it just, just for a second. Got a nice white, got a nice white finish on there. Now I can bake this in the oven and make it uh, really uh, cooked on, but for just right now, I'm just going to show you. I just, I'm just doing a little heat, and it's uh, melted the powder coat to the point where, uh, where I can, I can manage that. Okay, that's that's a powder coating, and I'll put that away. Okay, the next step in the spinnerbait is, uh, you say I want to have, I want to have a, a little a copper blade like this. So I have all those little components here. I'm going to put, uh, in this case, two or three beads on the shaft. Here's a bead, uh, right here. Let's see. So I like that, three beads. Now the next thing I want to put on is this clevis with a little blade on there, right here, is a blade with a clevis right here, and I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put it across, and remember, it's going to face forward. There's two ways it can go. It can go uh, with the concave side forward. That's what we do. Put it on the forward. Don't put it on backwards. It's easy to put a, a spinner on backwards. In, the, in this case, the, the rounded portion needs to go to the front. Okay, put a bead there. And here's a bead. Okay. Now, I have the beads on the shaft. Now, I'm going to make up a white spinnerbait. I took that powder coat that uh, just you saw me use, and I heated up this blade, and I dipped it in the powder coating, and I baked it. Again, if you bake it in the oven, you even get a better deal. But I have all different color powder, powder coats, black, and white, but one of the great spinnerbaits that I've, I can remember is a white one. And I have a really interesting story to tell you about this white spinnerbait. But first, let's let's make this blade up. Okay, I'm going to take and I'm going to turn this and make a little make a little clip right here. I'm going to turn it right here. <laughs> Years ago, I was fishing uh, with my wife Judy. Uh, and we were getting ready for a big tournament. See, in, in all these tournament competitions, we, we tailor our spinnerbait, just like I'm doing now, to the, to the conditions. And I'd heard that a white spinnerbait was a big deal. So I had a, one blade, one white blade I got, and I, I went ahead and made it up as the same size uh, blade as this. It's a four and a half. I put it on that thing there. I had it on a half ounce uh, spinnerbait, half ounce head. Okay, a nice big swivel. Now, I have the white spinnerbait, just the right amount of beads, and I'm going to put a white skirt on there. And this is what I did with Judy 20-something years ago when we were fishing for a big BASS tournament on Biosignet in, uh, in Louisiana. It's on the, the Mississippi River Delta area. Okay, I put that white, white thing in. Another thing I did at the time, I took these white little trailers, it happened to be a little Zoom trailer, but Yamamoto makes some good, better trailers now. But I'm just going to show you what I did then. This was 20 years ago. Okay, I made up this exact bait right here. With that trailer, that white skirt, that four and a half blade, and a half ounce spinnerbait. And that's what I made up. Okay, that, I was told that was going to be a good, a good compliment, good, a good combination. I only had one made up. I only had one blade. Okay, Judy and I get in the boat. And it's practice time. It's a couple days before the tournament started. And uh, she, she had a, actually a promotional consideration from uh, Lamb of Glass Rods. At the time, Judy was a certifi certified fly instructor. 
and she did a lot of demonstration on how to cast a, a fly rod. And so she did that at sports shows and stuff like that with her father and, and uh, over the years with people like Ann Strobel and some other famous fly fishermen, people like Lefty Cray. And anyway, uh, she was quite an accomplished, or is a quite an accomplished fly fisherman. But anyway, she had this rod. It was a favorite six and a half foot casting rod that was her favorite casting rod. It had Shimano reel, had set up with some 17 pound test uh, regular monofilament at the time. And she loved that rod and reel because she could cast so accurately. She, would, she loved to do tournament casting and accuracy and stuff like that. So that was her favorite, most accurate rod. And she, I gave her this white spinnerbait. Just exactly, almost perfectly like this one. Just almost the same thing. Well, anyway, she put this on the rod, and, and we tried a couple different places up and down uh, Lake Salvador, and we headed south, and we caught a couple, we even caught some redfish, and finally we came to a spot uh, near Homa, Louisiana. It was one hour away from Biosignet, all the way down this big waterway. The tide was, was rushing out. You see, the, it's tide water, so you have in and out waters, and it seems like the best fishing in all those little ponds are when the water is flushing out of the pond. So this was a falling tide, and it was about 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I think it was. I can't remember just what the time was. But anyway, it was a falling tide. And a uh, good river water was coming out. And uh, we pulled up to that spot, and she, the first time she cast, she threw in with this white spinnerbait. She caught this beautiful, big three-pound bass. I said, boy, that's a good one, Judy. That's one of the best we've seen all day. Well, anyway, I threw in. I didn't catch one. She threw back, got another nice one. I said, okay, boy, that's really good. I threw back, nothing. She threw back a third time. And she ended up catching five fish there. And they were all nice, two and three and four pound fish. She beautiful, beautiful bass. And I only caught like one or two little bitty ones. And I'm saying to Judy, I said, listen, this is practice. You have the right bait. We only have this one white spinner bait. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to leave this spot now because I don't want to burn it out. I want to come back uh, in a couple days when the tournament starts and possibly win the tournament here but I'll need to use this one white spinnerbait. It's the only one we have. So she says, okay. She said, Roland, here's the deal. I have this rod and reel. It's my favorite. It's my most accurate rod and reel. I'll lend it to you, and you just get us all set up. It's just the perfect complement of what you want to do. And, but if you lose that rod and reel, it's curtains. It's curtains. It's just all over with. I mean, you just can't lose a rod and reel. So anyway, the next day comes along, and it's a it's the day before the tournament starts, and I'm fishing by myself uh, this time. And so I get into this big brushy area, and, uh, and there's all these logs, and, and I'm making a big circle. And I, after a couple hours, I look back to the back of the boat to get this white spinnerbait of Judy's uh, rod, and I, I go to pick it up. The rod is gone. Her rod is not in the boat. I'm saying, oh my heavens, it's probably dangled over uh, and caught on a limb somewhere, caught on some brush or weeds, and it's pulled itself out of the boat, and I don't even know it. She's going to kill me. i got to find a rod and reel. It's the most important thing that there ever was, because it's her favorite. So I go backtrack. Now, I had a GPS at the time, and a GPS uh, had selective availability at the time. The government had, had made them less accurate than they are now. They've taken all that essay away. And now uh, GPSs are far more accurate than they were 20 years ago. At the time, 20 years ago, with this random selectability, uh, it, you'd be five or 10 feet off course. But I had a course on the GPS. You could see it. I had a little trail, fairly accurate, enough where I could see if it was 10 feet away, if it was a rod was hanging down somewhere. So finally, after several hours of looking, I mean, I was really in a panic. I found the, the rod and reel. It was hanging by a, a limb that had caught uh, the spinnerbait, and it was just hanging there. I got the rod and reel back. Oh, so boy. Ooh, <sighs> saved me on that one. Well, now the tournament starts the next day. So I get up bright and early, and I get this partner, and, I'm, and I said, okay, partner, we've got a long run. We're going to run down through Lake Salvador. We're going to run all the way down to Homa. We're going to run that way down to Waterway. And uh, we're just going to try some, uh, some little creeks and stuff to start with, and we'll go from there. He says, okay, okay. So we, it's rough, and it's a long ways, and it's, it's just a miserable kind of a ride. But anyway, we get there. If after one solid hour of running, we're finally at this little creek where Judy had caught all those fish uh, two days before. Well, I pick up, my, I pick up this rod and with like a tongue-in-cheek uh, 
comment, I said to my partner, I said, hey, partner, you know, it's sometimes very unlucky to throw in the first cast with any lure and catch one of the first casts because sometimes it's the only fish you catch all day. He said, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. I've done the same thing. I've gone in the first cast and I've just not caught a fish the whole day. It's bad luck. It's bad luck. I said, yeah, it really is bad luck. I, I, boy, I hate to kind of throw in there and catch one right now. Uh, but what the heck, I'm going to throw in there. I threw this spinnerbait in there. I, I didn't, I don't think I moved it a foot or two. And a nice big three pounder just comes up and eats it. My God, it's a good one. They're pulling drag and oh man, I'm pulling the motor. I said, the whole time I'm saying, oh, this is so unlucky. Oh, it's so unlucky. Oh, it's a big one though. Oh, it's unlucky. And so I get him in the boat. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. It's probably going to be the last one you catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, yeah, I know. That's terrible. So I throw back in there. I, moves it a, a foot or so, and bam, another one about the same size. He eats the spinnerbait. I got a hit on. Oh, man, double bad luck, double bad luck. He said, yeah, yeah. And so anyway, I get him in, and, and he's looking around, and about that time, I throw in the third time. I said, this is triple bad luck. He said, I don't know. And he's got three big ones. And finally, I catch a fourth one and a fifth one. When I landed the fifth bass, I'd been there four minutes and 30 seconds. I'd been there four and a half minutes and caught a limit of fish that weighed almost 16 pounds and put me way up in the top 10 in the tournament. And the whole time I'm saying, how unlucky can you be? And he said, I don't think that's very unlucky at all. Man, you got a beautiful limit of fish. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway, the long of it was he didn't have a white spinnerbait. And it was the only one I had. And so uh, I said, well, partner, I mean, I, don't, I, don't have, I can't very well give you this one. This is the only one I have. I don't have another one. And I, I have to, I can make one up somehow, like I just did today. Uh, and it's not hard to do with powder coating, with the torch, and with the, all the stuff I have. I can make them up pretty quick. But the point is, I didn't have any. So he says, yeah, okay. So I wanted to save that spot because the tournament's a two- or three-day tournament. It was a two-day tournament. No, three-day tournament. And so uh, I wanted to come back the next day. The tides would be a little bit later each day. Each day, the tide's a little later. So when I did come back the second day, it was like an hour later. When I got there, I had to kind of wait until the tide kind of changed, and it was an hour later. And then finally, the third day I got back, the, the tides were even later yet. And, and I ended up catching fish, but it, 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 I didn't win the tournament. But I came, I came in real high, got a big fat check, and I did really well. And the whole thing is, the white spinnerbait really saved the day. And, uh, but again, spinnerbaits, there's nothing sacred to a spinnerbait. I mean, I, okay, I use, uh, I use the, these, these baits now. This, this is my Roland Martin Big Bass spinnerbait thing that uh, we make with uh, Mega Strike. And that's the original Hildebrandt blade like I came out with so many years ago. It's a number five Hildebrandt. And when I first started making these for Blue Fox Tackle, I made them in uh, more or less, I don't have the original Blue Fox one here. Maybe this one was the original Blue Fox. That might have been one. That might have been the head of one. But anyway. So anyway, we started about uh, five or six years ago, we started uh, making them with Mega Strike, and it's the Roller Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait. But again, what made it a Big Bass Spinnerbait was the heavy wire, the heavy big Hildebrandt blade, and the big heavy swivel. So that's kind of what I brought to the table, a big heavy duty Big Bass Spinnerbait with a big blade. And that's kind of what I made up that day uh, down in Louisiana. Uh, it wasn't the Roller Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait at all, it was just a a rendition of it, you might say. It was a half ounce head, and it was a big heavy wire like this one. And it had also the twist. And when I came out with the Roller Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait, you notice this twist right here? That is a more secure situation than, than the, than the U-Bend. See, some of these things are, 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 don't have that kind of bend. If I'd show you another kind of skirt. Here, this one. See, that has just a, a U-Bend. Well, that line gets around stuff. And the other problem with this thing, is if the line breaks, if that thing actually breaks, which th the spinnerbaits do break after a while, that'll cut right off and the knot will slip right off and you'll lose the fish. As a, but this is designed that again, if it all stresses out and things uh, do break, it always breaks here. And they always are left with, that, with, that, with a good secure thing. Even though the spinner part is broken off, you still have the fish, you still have the jig part of the, of, of the spinnerbait, and you do catch the fish, so even if it breaks. 
So anyway, that's what uh, what I've been doing. I, I make spinner baits right and left. I make them f on custom orders for every single tournament I go to. I like just making them up and having a good time. But that was a cute story, catching them the first cast. How unlucky is that, catching a bass the first cast?